Right. 2100 hours and absolutely nobody here. But I'm going to uh, begin this. Um, what's going on here? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to begin this live stream anyway because um, uh, I'll be putting it on um, the, uh, the Internet Archive. Internet Archive. Extremely disappointing, but it is my first Sunday night um, presentation. Uh, well, I'll maybe wait for, wait, for another, wait for another couple of minutes if anybody turns up. Still nobody here. Oh dear. Okay. Um, celebrity false allegations. Right. Um, these have been much in the news recently um, because a lot of celebrities have been falsely accused, not just for this absurd Me Too movement, but um, going back to Operation New Tree. And they've been before that, of course. Um, first, some background to celebrity, celebrity false allegations generally. Um, Paul Gambaccini, who was himself falsely accused, is not the first person to make this, this kind of observation. But he pointed out that um, the, the average person, I mean, how many people do you know? Maybe, maybe you have half a dozen close friends or closest friends and... 20 or 30 people, how, how many people could identify you? 100, 200? More if you're a, a, a active in local government or a shopkeeper or something. But the celebrity is known to millions of people. And sometimes these people, their identification, um, well, well, need I mention John Lennon? Um, Monica Seles, the tennis player, was attacked by a lunatic on court, stabbed on court. Uh, celebrities are you know, some of them have uh, adoring fans, others fans who are well, a bit sinister. And this includes making up stuff about them. Um, now, I mean, I, I'm one of a, an increasingly small band of people who can remember living in a world not just without social media but without the internet. Um, in the in the old days, when, when nobody had heard of the internet, when the email was something that was confined to the military and to the academic network and um, online. Um, <clears throat> online, the online world was like for financial databases and such. Um, there were most people couldn't get. Um, it was oh, okay. That's the final time I did that first. Um, most people, um, you, you get a letter in a, in a local press, maybe maybe the national press but there were gatekeepers uh, editors and um, and the like and and the law of defamation um, at times the law of defamation could be used or was used by by fairly um, ordinary people not just celebrities if you look back you'll, you'll find the occasional defamation action by uh, a, a 
an, an ordinary person. Um, there was also something called criminal libel. Um, I mean, th there was a tabloid press in England from the 1880s, but um, the, the press was restricted in what it could say. And they say serious, really serious allegations. <laughs> I beg, beg your pardon. Uh, re really serious allegations were confined to whispers, whispering campaigns, rumours, scarlet leaflets. Um, having said that, even even today, even in these days. Um, the authorities will move against people who spread really outrageous uh, libels. Um, for example, in April, this is on the timeline, in April 2015, 2005, sorry, in April 2005, Dr. Desmond O'Callaghan and his lover, Anne Draper, uh, appeared in court. They were spreading absolutely scurrilous rumours, including of paedophilia, against the local clergyman. This was not Northampton Crown Court. The doctor was struck off on account of that. Uh, in... There's another one. In uh, March 2016, a teacher by the name of Sheena Boll, not to be confused with a professional musician of the same name, uh, phoned Childline, the service started by the uh, well-meaning but gullible Lester Ransom, um, and she pretended to be a 14-year-old girl with special needs. Oh, sorry about the, the, the uh, yawning. A uh, 14 year old girl with special needs, or what we would call a retard, what I would call a retard anyway. And uh, she, she claimed to have been, posing this girl, she claimed to have been sexually assaulted by a male teacher. Um, she was brought to book and struck off. So she can't teach anywhere in England, probably get a job in India or. China or somewhere teaching English, but uh, she, she's been struck off. <clears throat> and my favourite one, um, again, this is on the, the timeline. Dana, Dana Delaney Lloyd, uh, a woman in Florida, found the abuse hotline there. Oh, this <coughs> is shocking. I've been asleep all afternoon. Um, Dana. Delaney Lloyd phoned the Florida abuse hotline and she made a false allegation against a man um, claiming that he'd done something unspeakable to his daughter, his underage daughter. And um, the, the conspirators have made a, a big thing about this, uh, claiming she's uh, being persecuted. But, uh, She's actually engaged in a campaign of harassment against this guy. She was given a jail sentence by Judge Robin Lemonidis, <laughs> followed by probation. I haven't put the, the, the video on the timeline, but uh, the judge, when she sentenced her, stressed that she must have no, make no further comment about this guy, but mustn't mention him, in, 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 mustn't write anything about him on the internet, any letters. Nothing at all, <laughs> including lipstick on a balloon. So, um, you know, it's very easy to start uh, rumours and, and lie, spread lies and false allegations. And it happens to... Um, it can happen to ordinary people. Now, so celebrities... Uh, celebrities of a court accused of all manner of things, uh, financial impropriety, uh, <laughs> drugs, 
murders. Um, but for, our, for, for here, we will consider allegations of uh, <coughs> rape and, and sexual abuse and such. Um, men of a certain type, alpha males in particular, if they are charismatic, outspoken, particularly powerful, they tend to attract these sort of allegations. They're a magnet for them. <clears throat> um, Bill Clinton was one. Clinton's been accused of all manner of things. Uh, Hillary was uh, interviewed recently. She was uh, asked if her husband shouldn't resign after his... Um, oral encounter in the Oval Office with Monica Lewinsky. And uh, <clears throat> the interviewer put it to her that there was a power imbalance. They love this feminist power imbalance. And Hillary Clinton replied quite rightly, no, uh, this was, Monica Lewinsky was an adult. Um, now, should Clinton have had any sort of relationship with Monica Lewinsky? Certainly not. Not in your, not in the Oval Office, and not, <clears throat> not uh, doing what he did. Um, in fact, if Monica hadn't been so sweet natured, <laughs> it could have been, uh, it could have found itself in big trouble, big trouble. Um, she made all the running in that. Um, Gary Byrne, who served as uh, he, he was uh, with the Secret Service. He served as a, a Clinton bodyguard. He he uh, there's a, an interview with uh, <coughs> Sean Hannity. Um, he said that uh, Monica Lewinsky was chasing Clinton. It, it was known, and one day she came. She came in on a Saturday, bought the newspapers on a Saturday, and uh, so it, Clinton has this. I mean, he's ticks all the right boxes for, for women. He was uh, Attorney General and then twice Governor of Arkansas. Uh, intelligent, charismatic, handsome, and <clears throat> very very much a people person. Uh, men like him as well. Even even, even his political opponents. Uh, one guy said he was the most charming man. Uh, Hillary on the other <laughs> hand, it's a bit like me, she's unlikable. Well, perhaps, perhaps even worse than me. Um, and uh, women gravitate to men like that, um, like flies to a honeypot. And uh, when uh, when they were, the special counsel was investigating Whitewater, um, incidentally, there were, there were two indictments drawn up against Hillary Clinton, but they, uh, they, they, were, they was chosen not to go ahead with them. <clears throat> solely corrupt woman um when they were investigating that uh they came across um they uh, now this is this meant to be the the credible rape allegation against clinton by juanita broadrick um broadrick um uh, was asked if she'd had any, any interaction with clinton in 1998 she, she denied it and then in 1999 she claimed he'd raped her in 1978 and some, some, a lot of people have been taken in by this. Uh, even Judge Jeanine Piero says that uh, uh, there was contemporaneous evidence. There wasn't. It was complete rubbish. Um, Clinton's been accused of other rapes as well, including one woman who denied he'd raped her. And these, I mean, there's the, oh, the Clinton death list. That's a great one. Um, to You know, for, for people who... Uh, credulous or none too bright or don't know how to research um, this list of names of people allegedly murdered by Bill and Hillary Clinton it sounds it sounds impressive but you look into it it's it's nonsense I mean for example one 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 victim was a woman who she was a the, the former wife of a Clinton bodyguard who committed suicide while he was uh, in the White House <coughs> Clinton bodyguard in Arkansas 
uh, another, uh, the guy who's killed a, uh, a, a lawyer who uh, crashed his plane. He was about 73 years old. Um, and this, um, anyone can make a list of names. Uh, I've been living in this place for over 30 years now. 1986, I've moved in. There's been five or six people died since I moved since I, since then. People locally have died. Uh, <clears throat> been a uh, at least three murders locally. You know, four four ones. Uh, well, there's the notorious murder in the Sydenham car park. That's I think it was about 1986. But there's, there've been murders locally and all sorts of crimes. Uh, it's easy to 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 um, put together a list and say this is. This proves something. Um, when, when Hillary was questioned about Monica Lewinsky, she deflected to Donald Trump and the usual claims that he was credibly accused of this, that, and the other. Um, all the allegations against Trump have one thing in common they're delayed. Um, like, <clears throat> when this uh, Access Hollywood tape was uh, released uh, a decade after it was made covertly and it, it people say this is this is um, trump boasting about sexually assaulting women if you actually listen to what he says he doesn't do any such thing and after that they had five or six women crawled out of the woodwork and accused him there's one lunatic jessica leeds claimed to be sexually assaulted or assaulted on a on a, it was on a jumbo jet um these women had zero credibility zero and if i can just find one here um, this is uh, an outrageous one. Uh, there was um, no, I've, I've got the, I haven't got the uh, the, vid the video on here, but uh, there was a a woman accused Trump of raping when she was thirteen, and she was represented by. Uh, Lisa Bloom, surprise, surprise, the uh, daughter of Gloria Allred. And um, she went to be in a press conference and she backed out at the last minute because she'd been threatened. Um, and the, the, the allegations were, were ludicrous. Um, very few of these women who accuse celebrities ever file a police report. And many of those who do um, end up on the wrong end of it. For example, I'm not find this one. Um, <coughs> uh, in 2007, the magician David Copperfield was uh, accused of by a woman named Lacey Carroll of absolutely ludicrous allegations. Um, <coughs> he was cleared, but it was it was she brought several suit against him and then dropped it. Um, he was cleared and, um, and she went on to falsely accuse another man of rape. So it's, I mean, she has zero credibility. And since the Me Too movement, some, some other woman has accused Copperfield of rape. Does that mean he's been credibly accused of rape? Right? No, it means there's li li women out there. I mean, Copperfield has, you know, he's alpha male, highly intelligent, charismatic, wealthy. Uh, so th these men are t targeted all the time. Now, it doesn't mean that they're always innocent, you know? Doesn't mean they're always innocent. But most, certainly most billionaires can account for their movements. Um, and, and all the allegations against Trump are absolute rubbish, um, as are most of the women who accuse him. Um, <coughs> um, which brings me to Operation U Tree. Now this started, um, in what happened was there was a uh, a documentary about Jimmy Savile, um, which purported to claim he was a well claim that he was a, a serial sexual predator. Uh, this was screened in 2012, and very shortly there were literally hundreds of people making allegations against him. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Jimmy Savile, he was um, a disc jockey um, in, well, among other things. It, it, when he was younger, he was managing um, dance halls and like. 
he, he was even a wrestler, I think, a wrestler, wrestler, a boxer at one point. He, he had a quite an interesting career. Um, but in the nineteen the nineteen sixties, he was um, there was a, the, the program Top of the Pops, which undoubtedly you'd have heard of. He presented the very first program, Top of the Pops pro, 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 program, and four decades later, he co-presented the, the very last one. This is a program that's morphed into other, um, into other, um, other countries have had their top of the pops. Um, Savile was different from the other DJs. He was, uh, he wasn't quite the first crop of disc jockeys, but certainly it was the first crop of TV disc jockeys for the UK. Uh, he was older than most of them. He was about 40. Um, um, was he? Well, yeah, he he, he, was, he, was, he was older. He he had, he wore his hair dyed blonde. I used to smoke a big cigar and he made I cut the noise. It was strange noise. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, really weird stuff. He was he was a <clears throat> it was a classic English eccentric, and he played on it. Um. Uh, he was never, he wasn't he never married and of course at the, at the time certainly from the seventies uh, uh, the rumours that he was homosexual which is rather ironic if you later allegations uh, he actually appeared on the front cover of Gay News uh, this is now a long thankfully f- defunct homosexual magazine uh, he appeared on, on the fr- front cover of Gay News I think it was the first issue and he just didn't care um, through his uh, he, he was a DJ, he became a TV presenter, and he used to do he did a lot of charity work and work involving raising <coughs> awareness of uh, awareness of and money for, uh, for things like mental health and uh, spine unit at uh, Stark Mandeville Hospital. And he worked in cases as a porter and, and stuff. And he had a set of keys for Broadmoor, the um, Psychiatric hospital, a symbolic set of keys, really. And um, he was accused of all sorts of things. Um, the the documentary, um, the other side or the other face of Jimmy Savile. It was based on allegations from Duncroft School. Duncroft was. Um, Kind of Borstal. Uh, it was a school for 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 girls who had troubled history. Um, who were probably on their way to prison, but to, who, whose parents could afford to send them there. And uh, it was um, it was claimed that Savile treated this as his harem, and there were a number of women. <clears throat> the two in particular appeared in the documentary about Savile. Um, and absolutely outrageous allegation. I mean, he was accused, he's been accused uh, since then of um, sexually assaulting literally hundreds of girls and boys, mostly in plain, often in plain sight. He's been accused of dozens of rapes. It's an accuse of necrophilia um, and of Satanism. There's, there's one, uh, if I find this, this is, um, this is um, just absolutely ludicrous. Um, this is from the Daily Express, January 13th, 2013. Jimmy Savile was part of Satanic Ring and... Um, This comes from Valerie Sinison. If you, if you know, if you've ever heard the name Valerie Sinison, she's a demented hag, uh, a therapist to uh, these women and sometimes men tell her all sorts of stories about how they've been victims of satanic abuse and uh, weird stuff. Uh, she, she 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 believes it uncritically. Um, she edited a book called. Um, Treating victims of Satanist abuse, <laughs> and it's 
Uh, it's, uh, that was in, in the 19, 1990s, and it's it's absolutely ludicrous. And you get these people coming forward making these ludicrous claims. Um, another person, a person who roped in was Edward Heath. Uh, Edward Heath was Prime Minister of, of England. Um, he became leader of the Conservative Party in 1965. He was became Prime Minister, ousting his great rival, Harold Wilson, was ousted by Wilson in turn. He was eventually replaced by Margaret Thatcher, uh, which left him a very embittered man. And um, I mean, he carried on serving. Uh, he, he was father of the house at, at one point, he was the oldest, longest serving MP. He served until, uh, well, he, was, he died in 2005. I think he served up to his death, or nearly up to his death. But it, I mean, I'm, I'm no Heath fan. He was a fanatical Europhile, just to one thing. But he put it in a, a, a North Circle of service. Um, he was also unmarried, the only unmarried Prime Minister of this century, last century, I believe. Um, and apart from William Pitt the Younger, who I think wasn't married, probably the only, maybe, maybe the only one. And of course, that could mean only one thing, can not it? Nudge that, wink, wink. In fact, <coughs> Heath had uh, three great passions in life politics, number one. He was also a very accomplished musician, conducted orchestra on occasion, and he, he was a keyboard player, he composed as well a bit. Uh, he lived in Broadstairs, and his third passion was uh, yachting. And uh, I'm not going to play it, but there's a, there's a video record. It was a recording on, on YouTube of barrister Michael Shrimpton claiming <laughs> that uh, uh, Savile recruited boys for Heath who were murdered on his yacht. <laughs> and uh, Shrimpton is, used to be a barrister. He was a judge at one point, uh, uh, not, not a high court judge, a fairly low level judge. Uh, he ended up in court himself uh, making hoax bomb threats to the Olympics. And he was also caught with uh, child porn on his phone. Uh, even worse than that, it was child porn of boys. So, so uh, I think he claimed that he was, uh, it was fitted up by the security services. Well, believe that if you want. Uh, so <clears throat> he's been roped into that. Um, all sorts of allegations have been made against Heath, and even one very senior, one very senior police officer, uh, the chief constable of Wiltshire, took this nonsense seriously. And all these lunatics calling out Lord Work claiming they were raped and uh, by Heath. And you had some nutter called Nick, who was uh, what the, the games that were played there was, uh, with Lou Scotland. They were absolutely outrageous. Uh, he claimed that. Um, He'd been um, present when it was Heath and, and Harvey Proctor and others and boys were murdered. Uh, uh, it's absolutely, absolutely ludicrous stuff. But people believe this. Um, in fact, Ed, Edward Heath, I mean, everywhere we went, he had a bodyguard uh, because in the 1960s, you had, I mean, there was no Islamist terror as such to, as there is now, but it was the, the provisional IRA. And... Uh, I mean, in 1980, they, 1980, yeah, they murdered Lord, Lord Mountbatten. In 1983, they came within a whisker of murdering not just Margaret Thatcher, but her entire cabinet in the Brighton bombing. Um, all sorts of atrocities. So Heath was very well protected. So at what point did he nip off to bugger, torture and murder boys? And if he did, he's... His, his special branch escort would have been on it. It's absolutely crazy stuff. But people believe this. Um, last, this year, August the 2nd, my birthday, Sonia Porter, the so-called journalist, um, released a, a video called Paedophiles in Parliament, which was all innuendo about, about Heath and company. And um, so, uh, that's a side here. Uh, I, I, I published a review of it on the International Internet and Movie Database, and I sent her a link to it. And shortly, surprise, surprise, to I gave it a very negative rating, and to <coughs> two two reviews by uh, obviously written by her appeared on on the on the same same site. Uh, one giving it nine out of ten, the other giving it ten out of ten. Um, 
but coming back to, to Jimmy Savile, um, the allegations against Savile with regard to Duncroft had actually been refuted in 2009 when he was questioned under caution by the police. Um, and yet <clears throat> hundreds of people, literally hundreds of people went on to make allegations against him. What happened between 2009 and 2014? Savile died. He died in October 2011. And once you're dead, uh, you're fair game. Um, this um, Savile was questioned by um, Surrey Police at the National Spinal Injury Centre, Stoke Mandeville Hospital, on October the 1st, 2009. He wasn't under, <coughs> he was under caution, but he wasn't under arrest. And he turned up without legal representation. That's how confident he was. And this whole, I, I don't like to use the term interview, but uh, this whole uh, police, what, what we got here is, is really a refutation of the nonsense. Um, I haven't put this on the timeline. I will do at some point. It'll be, be a while yet. Uh, can you confirm your date of birth will be 31st of the 10th, 20, uh, uh, 9, 1926. So he was, he was nearly 40 years old when he... Uh, he um, went into DJ big time. Well, he's 83 at the time. Um, and he says, uh, I don't, I've never done anything wrong. Never done anything wrong. That doesn't mean to say in my business you don't get accused of this about everything because people are looking for a bit of blackmail or papers are looking for a story. So they keep going on, but you got to clear, if you've got a clear conscience, I have, everything's okay. Uh, <coughs> And um, he's asked all sorts of questions here. I understand, and if Jim wanted my opinion, I would say not to answer any questions about first of all, he was a listener. That's entirely up to him, of course. That's, a, that's a, another officer in the room. Uh, I'm quite happy to answer questions, because if you've done nothing wrong, then you're OK. Well, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, He stresses again that he doesn't want a solicitor present. And he's cautioned. I work with a child protection team. Names are redacted. Recently, recently moved to such and such. I received reports from a lady called Name Redacted. So she reported to me that she was a resident of Dunkoff Children's Home in Staines, which is a Bernardo's home in the 1970s. She was told by another girl that when Jimmy Savile visited, he touched her over her clothes sexually. She was told by another girl, it's, it's hearsay at best. And Savile says, oh, out of the question. And he would tell her he would buy her chocolates when she got to the age of 16, out of the question. Both girls were under 16, uh, saw her behave inappropriately. Uh, Redacted said he put her hand, his, he put her hand on his groin over his clothes and moved it around, making him aroused. So I'm making further inquiries, I became aware of two further incidents were reported. Uh, <coughs> and then massages Gloria, Gwen area and give him all oral sex. <coughs> Out of the question. And she refused. And finally, the last one, who was a resident of Duncroft, stated that when she was age redacted, she was in the girls' choir. They attended a concert at Stoke Mandeville Hospital in Ellsbury, and Jewish Hall was present. As she left the area, he kissed her on the lips and put his tongue in her mouth. Again, out of the question. <coughs> so those are three sorts of alleg main allegations. So tell me what you know about any of these support allegations. And he says, uh, right, the main allegations are completely fictional. In fact, they're made up. You could tell they're made up. In your letter, you referred to Duncroft as a children's home, which it wasn't. It was a posh borstal because what would happen, all the girls who were there through the courts and under the circumstances of a parent to afford, so a girl being sent to borstal, normal borstal, they could act. Uh, normal bustle. They could actually pay for them to go to this place. And it was an experiment run by Dr. Minardo, who, of course, is a godsend for the parents. Um, <coughs> now, this is very important. Uh, Serval says, I, I went there with Princess Alexandra, a friend of mine, and 
she said, "Is not a children's home, Jimmy? All young ladies." And I said, "Yes, and of course." So all upper crust boys and things like that, you see. And and she said, "Why are the bars on the windows?" I said, "Well, because it's a lockup." Now this is this is very interesting. Um, when this transcript was released, um, the name of Princess Alexandra was redacted, and the conspirators painted this as. Um, the police covering up for royalty and royalty being part of the conspiracy. There's one idiot called Bill Maloney, uh, who's even accused the Queen of the Queen herself of being involved with pedophilia. <coughs> but this, the truth of this, uh, Alec, Princess Alexandra is about 82 now. She's a very minor royal. She's 50 seconds line to the throne at the moment. Um, but what do even very minor royals have when they go walk about? They have security, lots of it. There'll be police officers present, people watching at a distance, and there'll be whatever institutional building they're busy. If it's, out, if it's outside, there'll be managers, um, <coughs> press officers, press people, um, lots of people. So um, what it, what somebody is saying is that he was there with her and lots of people. So how is he going to do these things? And he, he makes the point there. There's no chance for anything you described to happen, say, because there's never less than 30, 40 people all milling around. So you can't do things like you just suggested. That's why I know. I wouldn't do anything like that anyway. It's a made-up story. And what can you do with a made-up story? Um, and he's asked questions about um, Leeds Infirmary. It was a specific charity or thing involved in. What I've done since I've grew up a charity type family. My parents, bless them, didn't have any money. And he's going on about this. Um, he says, I go to Duncroft. Uh, you're very nice. You see, friendly how I am. All of a sudden, somebody turns around and bites your leg. It's the same with Leeds Infirmary. It's the same here. So I've been engaged in a day to day working lifestyle because, from I reckon, uh, up how much I've been raised, but newspapers too. About three or four years ago, they worked out I'd raised just over £40 million. Pounds. Ain't no big deal. It's just a way of life. Um, so in the late, late 1970s, police said, you were, as you say, you got more well-known. You are able to raise more money. You were on television at that point. They said, yeah, I did 42 years on top of the pops. The first one, the very last one. 36 years on Radio 1. Um, when you're top of the pops on Radio 1, what you don't do is assault women. They assault you. That's for sure, you don't have to, because you've got plenty of girls about and all that. So dealing with something like that is out of the question, totally wrong, full stop. So at the time, when these women were alleged it's happened, you would have been a well-known celebrity. Oh, crumbs, yes, yes, on the television when it was black and white, so I've been 50 years on TV this game this year. A lot better when you have to work down the pit, uh, as I started off a lot like working down the pit. Um, <clears throat> were you linked in any way to Dr. Blada as a charity? No, never, but I've done things for them because I don't have any specific charity and such. Um, now, when, when these allegations were made, um, well, essentially what happened, after the police interviewed several at length here, and after he died, the, the programme, which was um, the brainchild of Mark Williams Thomas, Basically, it gave carte blanche to the women who made these allegations, which were clearly rubbish, to, to come forward and repeat them. Uh, really similar to what happened in Canada with John Gomeshi. There, uh, Gomeshi is on the timeline. Gomeshi was accused, well, he was, it's a bit of a complicated story, but he was, he, he was into SNM and um, he, he broke some woman's rib or something. And there was a, um, during a consensual session, and um, <coughs> the tabloids, a tabloid or tabloid TV, decided to do a big expose of him. And um, three women, led by Lucy Decatur, uh, came forward and they, they made all sorts of allegations. Uh, Gomeshi was tried not for rape, but he was tried for one, one of the allegations was one of the charges against him was overcoming sexual resistance by choking. Um, 
they, they, they conspired through social media. This came out at the trial. And um, fortunately for him, um, Gomeshia kept all their correspondence. And um, at, at trial, <coughs> at trial, he was, they, were, they were exposed as liars. He was acquitted. And Lucia Decatur was given space in The Guardian basically to, to power up the lies that had been refuted um, at the trial. And uh, the response in Canada is, is absolutely unbelievable. They were in, in something called Bill C-61, they're trying to get it um, to um, exclude such exculpatory evidence. <laughs> uh, emails, and he had at least one postcard or letter that uh, one of these hacks had sent him. Um, so it's similar to that. Um, now, af after these so-called revelations, sorry, after the documentary, uh, a woman who died last year um, used to blog down a raccoon, Suzanne Nundy or Suzanne Cameron Blackie. Nundy is a, ma uh, a married name. She died uh, last year. She had cancer. Um, she noticed that one of the uh, one of Savile's accusers. Uh, claimed he visited uh, Duncroft in a, she'd been uh, abused by Savile in the 1960s, and, and she was there in the 1960s. And it turned out that Savile, they, they worked out precisely when he first appeared at Duncroft, that, well, first went to Duncroft, that was in 1974, January 1974. So all these, all these lies about Savile. Now, <clears throat> I will say... Uh, about Mark Williams Thomas. He's a very shady sort of character. He, he, he served with Surrey Police for 12 years, and then he left. Um, he was he was basically an ordinary plod, but he also... Um, he, 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 he was a, a, a detective at some point, and though he was a permanent detective, he was a permanent detective. He became a detective. Uh, he, he was did the odd stint as detective constable. And he left after twelve years, which is, you know, I mean, <clears throat> a police officer with twelve years service in this country is nearly halfway to a fat pension, promotion. Um, if he moved to a different part of the country, he could transfer to a to a different force. Um, so it's a bit suspicious there. Uh, also, he ended up in court himself at some point. He was charged with some, I think it was some sort of fraud. He was acquitted. So he should know better that, that about uh, false allegations. Um, but but all this, uh, Savile denied all this stuff. And he made some very, uh, some very good, uh, some very um, person observations uh, <coughs> um, about the women. The, the, the girls as they were then. Um, about uh, various allegations. Uh, a bit more about um, Duncroft. And it, it's clear that Duncroft was, um, you know, the, I mean, the, the idea that he could just turn up and um, abuse her. There's one here, uh, he was accused of uh, try it on the girl in, in the television room. Um, you got, did you go to the TV room on occasion? Not on a one to one basis, and I can specific, specifically say that that's not my nature. It never happened. There's a fabrication. Why does one of the fabrication? I don't know. Probably because it's coming up for Christmas, so looking for a few quid off a newspaper. So, did you sit next to a girl called blah 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 at the time? Do you remember sitting next to a girl? No, at all. I don't even remember the name, I don't remember any anybody, any of the girls that. Will come out, uh, <clears throat> and, he, and he says here that um, it was said that she had a blanket over her knee. You went under the blanket. No, ridiculous! In front of thirty, in front of all the people, what are you talking about? Ridiculous! And this is, you know, when Savile went there, um, went to his visits to Duncroft. Um, he. Um, you know, he didn't turn up alone. <laughs> you know, he was a celebrity, and um, it's it's 
did you ask for a massage with the girls with the Never. So would it be sort of head and shoulders? No, never, 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 never. Did you have Curry Helms? Well, not at all. Bearing in mind, I was in the business where there was a million girls, which is the popular decision. You didn't have to go to, to these people, that sort of thing. Is that the question? Um, and there's um, all sorts of allegations here. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's... It's, it's really absurd. Uh, took pictures with girls. A uh, picture sat in an environment. It was at least 40 of them in the choir. So I don't know if anybody got to kiss someone on your lips and stick your tongue down the side. It's ridiculous. Uh, this is, um, you know, don't, bear in mind this is years after this didn't happen, these allegations, these allegations were made. Uh, if it is so, because we say because people get accused of just about everything. One of the reasons is people looking for money. You know, we try to blackmail and write letters saying, you don't send us money or say you've done this, that and the other, this and that. Uh, so that's why there's a group of people who just like causing trouble. We have plenty of that anyway. Um, where, I live in Leeds, I, I, where I live in Leeds, a collection of senior police persons who come to see me socially, I give them all the weirdo letters and I take them back to the station. Uh, oh, have you seen what Jimmy's got today? Uh, so um, there's an interesting one here. I got a letter from a girl who lived in somewhere down in Devonway, and she said, Dear Jimmy, you were very naughty. You left the window open last night when you got up. It's, uh, I've, I've, never, I've never been to uh, in my life. I gave that letter to the girls here. Uh, I gave that letter to the girls here about five or six weeks later. He's talking about um, the, the women in the hospital. I got a letter, would you believe, from a consultant. A doctor, can you tell me your intentions with regard to my patient? This is a place I've never been to, a person I've never know, knew. Uh, my girls here were furious. They said, uh, well, look, uh, <laughs> uh, this letter, uh, let's answer this, does, because the, uh, do, the man's a doctor. But this letter, because the man's a doctor, uh, is a uh, let's Let us answer this letter. Because the man's a doctor, is a lunatic. I said, yeah. Um, so I think that's a bit of a misprint there, but... Uh, this, this happens to celebrities all the time. Um, the, Tucker Carlson, the American TV presenter, Fox News presenter, um, is, uh, he's on the timeline, but um, um, he, he, uh, there's a video of him talking about the time he was falsely accused of rape by a woman he'd never met. Um, and uh, Samuel goes on here. And so he answers all their questions. Um, and it's, <coughs> it's complete bunk. Now, some of the questions I, I used to talk about here about um, suing for defamation. I uh, sued for defamation before. Um, He's been accused, he was accused of all manner of things at the BBC. Uh, he was meant to have, uh, <laughs> there's one ludicrous allegation, he was meant to have raped a boy dressed in a Womble costume. And the papers just print this rubbish. Um, I've been to the BBC and it's, you know, you can't just walk in. I mean, at, at the 70s, I say, <coughs> it wouldn't have been the security there is today. But, um, you couldn't just walk in. Kids couldn't just walk in the BBC. Um, the, I mean, there have been child actors in this country for... I mean, Noel Coward was a child actor. He was born in 1899. And there's legislation going back uh, that kids have to... They can only work a certain amount of hours. They have to be... Um, have to have so, so much education. They have to be chaperoned. So the idea that there were dozens of girls walking around the BBC. Um, <clears throat> there's one clip, uh, you'll find it on YouTube, of a girl. It, it, put, it ports to show someone actually groping a girl on TV, live on, on top of the pops. And uh, you can see he's, he's clearly, <clears throat> they're clowning around, he, he jabs her in the, in the ribs or something, and she claims it was lower down. Uh, he said, the, the woman who does Bombard's body language has done an analysis of that. She says this, this girl was lying. And she also uh, did an analysis of 
of a, a travel interview, uh, which um, she, 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 she going, her, for what it's worth, she says that she doesn't believe any of this about Savile. Um, now, what happened with, because Savile was dead by the time this rubbish came out, the, the police in this country appeared to go mad, uh, particularly the New Scotland Yard. And you think that half the men who'd entertained us for the past 50 years were child sex abusers and they, they arrested people left, right and centre. Um, the most outrageous cases were Rolf Harris, Max Clifford, who died in prison protesting his innocence, and David Lee Travis, who was subjected to horrendous persecution. Um, in fact, the, uh, Rolf Harris, his crime, if it can be called that, was that he had um, his daughter Bindi had a young friend uh, who travelled travelled the world with Harris and went uh, from when the age of thirteen. And then his version is that after she after she was eighteen, she came on to him and they started an affair of sorts. Um, and um, the, the, this, the truth about this came out in the, the 1980s and he wrote a letter to her parents saying that he was ashamed of himself and forgive me, but denied any propriety. Um, <coughs> this, this, this girl, this uh, deranged individual who, who's shielded by lifelong anonymity, she appears to, I mean, what happened was Harris actually had another mistress who uh, is, is dead now? She, he, he actually moved her into moved her into the, the home <laughs> under his wife's nose. So his, his other mistress was his, his younger mistress was happy about that. But they they used all sorts of demented hags from around the world to to make allegations against him. With um, with um, Max Clifford now. I can understand people not liking Max Clifford. I can understand people having it in for Max Clifford because he rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. But who did Rolf Harris ever hurt? But there's a very, a very interesting uh, in Clifford's daughter, who was not cut from the same cloth as him. She, uh, she's a really nice person. She, she she's disabled. She says, um, I forget what it is. It's some. She's very um, delicate bones or something. And he was on holiday with her in Spain in 1983. And they dug out <clears throat> some woman who claimed that when she was 12 or 13, um, Clifford got in a, a sauna with her, uh, a tub, and induced her to masturbate him. This was in Spain. He wasn't charged with this because it was beyond the jurisdiction, but this is purely to blacken his character. And th these women, they crawl out of the woodwork, you know? Um, he died in prison at the age of 74. They tried to keep, they, they brought another charge against him, but he was acquitted. They, they tried to do this to Harris as well, uh, but he was, um, he beat, he managed to beat the rap on other charges. Dave Lee Travis, what they did to him was absolutely outrageous. He, he was charged with 12 counts of various um, indecent assault. Um, None of it against young girls. And um, he was cleared of, I think it was, I forget my mathematics right, he was cleared of 10 of them. The other two were undecided. So they retried him and they, they added another charge or two charges. But eventually he was convicted of one count of. Um, one indecent assault, and um, which he has to live with, uh, and they, they bankrupted him. Uh, some demented hag, I've heard, this isn't generally in the public domain, but it, some demented hag accused him of rape, which the police, to their credit, refused to entertain. Um, but uh, they'd be persecuted financially by a firm of disreputable lawyers. Um, the Savile a lot of the Savile thing is to is it's been a, a feast a feasting frenzy for the lawyers. Um, uh, <coughs>
DLT was foolish enough to to allow a, a woman journalist, Camilla something, to interview him at his home. And she wrote a load of crap about him um, groping her. And of course, she didn't go to the police. Um, and um, it's just absolutely outrageous. Very interestingly, one of the first um, people, uh, Operation Nutri Allegations, this is some of the police officers who watched this in my life, bear in mind, was against the comedian Jimmy Tarbuck who couldn't have possibly been confused with Jimmy Savile. Five women, five, accused him of um, sexually assaulting them at the top of the pop studio, all uh, the same studio, one which wasn't in use at the time, not for top of the pops anyway. Um, <clears throat> it'd be very interesting to see if these five knew each other, if they all knew a certain law firm, which I won't mention. But if they did, that's prima facie evidence of conspiracy. Um, Gary Glitter was, I mean, Gary Glitter was on the radar. Um, and he was convicted, he got a 16 year sentence uh, for attempted rape. He was meant to try to rape a, a girl in the basement of a house, had no basement. Um, nobody's going to lose sleep over Gary Glitter on account of his antecedents. But let's not consider. Let's not um, kid ourselves. He was convicted because he was Gary Glitter, not for any other reason. Um, Chris Denning was convicted, but Denning has a track record going back to the 1960s. He's a homosexual and a, a degenerate um, <coughs> uh, who'd been going with underage boys. Um, the only new person. Uh, the only person who wasn't on the radar before was the former TV presenter Stuart Hall. Um, he was a, he stood trial for, he was tried for, well, I accused him, he was accused of 14, I think 14, 12 or 14 indecent assaults on one rape. They obviously did a, a deal. He obviously did a deal because he pleaded guilty to the 14 indecent assaults. They dropped the rape charge. Then they brought, then they tried him again. For I think I think it was six counts of rape, six counts of indecent assault, six of rape. I mean, he even he was acquitted of all the major charges. Um, William Roach, who was at the time the longest serving soap opera star in the world, he was charged with I think five rapes and he beat them all, uh, which is outright lies. Um, <coughs> Jim Davidson. Now, look what happened. Jim Davison was outrageous. Um, one of the one of his accusers said that uh, it was <laughs> absolutely ridiculous scenario that he'd already raped her at the door uh, at um, the London Palladium. When he pointed out to the police that there was no public access to that, he was, he was meant to have done this in the presence of a uh, security man. When he pointed out there was no access to um, the, um, no public access to, to where the stars, the dressing rooms are there. Uh, when he pointed that out, they, um, they amended the charge to the, the allegation, accused him of, of doing it somewhere else. So it, there had obviously been feedback between uh, the, the, his accuser and the police. None of these lying heads were charged with anything. Um, what, what I do find very sinister, very sinister here, is that um, the police knew, they must have known that most of all these allegations were bull. And I'll tell you why. Uh, w one person who had been on the radio for a long time was Ray Terrett, who had been in uh, a record shop in Manchester. And um, he'd been a, a disc jockey as well. He ended up with, I think, 25 year sentence. Now, Terrett had been accused back in the 90s of, uh, he'd been having sex with underage girls. I don't mean underage, you know, 13, well, 13, and maybe, maybe even 12. Um, 
they they found physical evidence against Terry. Like they they visited a place where he used to live, and like there was a notice board with girls sign, signing their names on it, and they actually cut this board out of the wall and took it to the trial. And they went to you. The video was the documentary was on um, was on YouTube. May still be there. Um, the police, Greater Manchester Police, went to extraordinary lengths to prevent one accuser's testimony uh, contaminating another. So they found one girl, well, a woman then, uh, uh, the one accuser. They traced another one, and they didn't tell her any details. And I think it was certainly three of them. And they the, 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 they corroborated without the there was no I mean, the police are aware of the way witness evidence can be contaminated um, from, from the public domain and from, from other people's testimony. They're, they're aware of this. You know, this, is, this is no big secret. Um, and yet, with Rolf Harris and with um, DLT and the others, they, they still present this ludicrous argument, well, none of these women know each other, so it's either a conspiracy or the, the accused is guilty. Ho, ho, ho. Um, so they, they know all about the bandwagon effect and, and false allegations and, and, and false, indeed false confessions. Um, but they went the extra mile to, to ensure that Terrett was convicted with reliable evidence. And at the same time, they trashed Rolf Harris, uh, David Lee Travis, and, and tried to do this to other, others as well. Two very interesting observations here with regard to... Uh, <coughs> Strikingly similar, uh, one of DLT's accusers and one of Harris' accusers. Harris was accused of um, groping a, a, a girl, Wendy Wild, also known as Wendy Rocha, in about 1969 or 1970, how ridiculous it is. And her testimony was that the jury convicted him, even though there was absolutely no evidence he'd been to the the um, the place where he was meant to have done this, uh, as a, a community centre in, in the West Country. No, no, no there, would have been, there would have been a paper trial a mile wide if he'd been there. And this had claimed he'd given her 40 years of hell. Uh, when, when, when his case went to the Court of Appeal, <clears throat> that conviction was quashed. Um, it's 40 years of hell, she said she'd had. Now, DLT, one of DLT's accusers, this this is uh, quite amazing. This wasn't on the chart. This wasn't a charge, but it, it was something that was used to blacken his character. In 1973, he opened a radio station at a, um, a hospital. And one of his accusers was the carnival queen, the teenage carnival queen. And she claimed to have had 40 years of hell by by Harris uh, by um, DLT groping at Carnival, and uh, she said that uh, her husband had died, and he hadn't understood why sex had always been unsatisfactory, and she blamed it on him. <laughs> and somebody be following the trial um, said, "I I was there, I videoed this," and he contacted. I presume it was a bloke. Uh, he contacted DLT's legal team, and it was they had video. Now, this video was on YouTube. It's gone now, um, which is rather annoying. I'm, I should have downloaded it, but I, I assume it would still be, would be there definitely. So, if anybody, if anybody does, um, if anybody does find find this, um, but um, the, the the video showed. David Lee Travis turned out with his wife on his arm and an entourage in tow. And it was obvious that nothing could have happened. Uh, and there was another allegation against Harris, who was meant to have groped a, a woman at, um, I don't think, I think Gloucester. And he, he made a mistake of saying he'd never been there. And instead of saying he couldn't remember being there, and they accused him of lying. Um, but he was supposed to have done this out in the open with you know, people hanging around. And it's, it's amazing. So many allegations against Bill Cosby are like this. One of Cosby's accusers claimed that he, he groped her or done something to her in the middle of a football field. There's about seven or eight of them standing around, and there's a, a big, um, you know, 
uh, uh, audience, uh, uh, spectators. Yeah. Let me leave the football field doing something. He's supposed to have done it there. Um, of course, these allegations, are, they're always delayed because if they were made at the time, well, people say, well, I was there. I, you know, this couldn't have happened. Um, I'll just go back to Jimmy Savile. So, so some of the, I mean, you, you read all sorts of stuff. Uh, the, the, the narrative we're fed by, by the mainstream media is that Savile is the greatest serial groper, paedophile, and occasional rapist, most prolific, most prolific um, serial groper of, of underage girls this country has ever seen, and occasional rapist. Um, but if you look at the the, doc, the original documents, these are all online. Um, all manner of hospitals and authorities said that they trawled through their um, the, the reports, and it comes up with nothing, absolutely nothing. There were two allegations against Savile from the 1950s. When, if he ever visited the hospital in the 1950s, it was for, you know, for, as a patient. Uh, you know, he used to, he used to visit um, he used to visit kids in hospital. Uh, one, <laughs> this is showing how, how low these people sink. There was one girl he raised money for a, for a treatment for cancer. Uh, I think she sent a thank you letter at some point. She put the claim against his estate for sixty thousand pounds. Um, there's absolutely nothing there. It's all rubbish. And what does really annoy me is that um, Dame Janet Smith presided over it. I've actually appeared before Lady Justice Smith, as she then was, um, in the 1990s. She, she struck me as a very level-headed and fair judge, but she and she did the shipment inquiry as well. But with this, I mean, she's taken a risk. None of these accusers have been cross-examined. Um, <clears throat> so if, if you... There are two blogs. There's the... the Anna Acuna is, is dead now, but they say the blog has been archived. And there's a bloke called um, Moore Larkin who's done a lot of uh, research on Saddle. Now, when, when there are so many allegations... And where they're meant to have been carried out in private, etc. They cannot not be. Most of them can't be verified. Yeah, but they can't be proved or disproved. But a lot of them can be. A lot of them are refuted by chronology. Same as with the Cosby case in the United States, and yet this, <clears throat> um, you yeah, know, Cosby comes down to one sordid relationship with a six foot lesbian basketball coach um and yet the public perception is he's a serial rapist um so a lot of this stuff with trump is, is complete garbage um i should mention <coughs> the case of cliff richard because this was particularly outrageous um cliff richard was a big name from the 1950s, he was like probably the nearest thing we got to Elvis. Um, um, what's his name? Um, Alex Harvey was Scotland's answer to Elvis, but Cliff Richard was you know, the nearest thing to the British Elvis. He was actually born in India, by the way, Cliff Richard, Imperial India. Um, Cliff Richard has never married, so it can only mean one thing, can't it? That's, that's ring, ring. Um, so his accusers were male. Um, what happened was that he was accused by some demented male of groping or flashing at a Billy Graham event, the, the evangelist Billy Graham in the 1980s. South Yorkshire police <coughs> used this as a pretext to raid his home. They tipped off the BBC, they put a helicopter in the sky. Uh, and nothing. Uh, they, 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 I mean, what are they looking for? On, on what grounds? What the police do this now? Anytime somebody's accused of any sex offence, 
or many other things. They seize their mobile person's mobile phone, computers. You know, they do it because they can and because they're cunts, basically. Because the British police are cunts, unlike the American police, are psychopaths. Um, they, they put BBC <coughs> put the the um, camera in the sky. Um, Cliff Richard sued for private. Uh, uh, the, the, he bought a privacy uh, violation and uh, he won his action, and it was it was brought as a uh, privacy and it was. Uh, it's the exact wording of, uh, against the BBC and against Surrey Police, uh, against uh, South Yorkshire Police. And uh, the court, the judgment read it as a violation of privacy. It wasn't about his privacy at all. What this was, was an incitement. It was a, a blatant conspiracy between South Yorkshire Police and certain elements of the BBC. They were saying, right, we've got this, this an allegation has been made against this guy. We want other people to come forward to make allegations against him. We don't care who you are. We will believe you. And if we get enough, we can show a pattern of offending and we can destroy this guy. We can put him in jail. Absolutely outrageous. And there were actually a number of allegations made against um, Cliff Richard, but none of them were considered credible. You know, this idea that just because two, three, four people make allegations um, against somebody that it's, it's that, that these allegations have any credibility. They don't. Not 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 certainly not in a celebrity case. Not in a celebrity case. And where where there's um, where there's a, a bandwagon effect. It's a well known psychological phenomenon. You get people coming forward making false allegations. So anytime you hear of allegations against celebrities um, any, any, well, any allegation, not just sexual allegations, but uh, think twice and thrice. Politicians do tend to get involved in, um, you know, most of most of their scandals uh, involve money in some way, manner, shape, or form. Um, <clears throat> but most celebrities can, most male celebrities, certainly alpha males. Uh, they, they they have their pick of women. Now I'm not saying they don't mistreat women. I don't treat. How can I put it? I mentioned before the case of um, you'll find in the database you'll find lots of cases of men who've had sex with women and said thank you for the ride, and then um, and, and then dump them. Um, you know. Surfers can and do treat women badly, but the idea that the, the male celebrities are raping women left, right, and centre is just not true. I mean, rock, this, rock stars and girls have thrown themselves at rock stars since I was a kid. You know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Beatlemania, <laughs> and uh, uh, before that, you know, they had um, rock and the, the old rock and roll 1950s, but certainly, we, we, certainly the, the swing sits, Beatlemania and the swinging 60s, and rock stars in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, they, they, women throw themselves at them. Um, actors um, and say people like um, Donald Trump, uh, he's a, not just a businessman, but high profile TV star. So um, th these allegations. Uh, this, 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 is a, this is a story about Savile here. This, this is from Daily Telegraph, um, web edition, October 17th, 2013. Former PC Paul Leonard, who claims every police officer in Leeds knew Savile was a pervert, says the DJ was part of the labour and told him he was waiting until midnight when the girl turned 16. Now, that's an old joke. I heard that. I heard that back in the 1970s as a, a, a copper... Um, Goes up to a car parked in a, in a lover's lane, a dark, a dark street, and he, he, he asks, says to the driver, um, Texas, Texas, um, license, how old are you? He says, 21 or something. How old is she? <laughs> the guy says, 16 in 10 minutes. That's an old joke. Um, Mr. Leonard, who's using an alias, told the Daily Mirror. So, this is one paper quoting another, uh, an alias. 
so we don't even know if this guy exists. Um, <laughs> these had occurred in 1965. Oh, oh Mr. said once found several a younger age was with the question. If if you want to keep your job, I suggest you get on your bike and fuck off. <laughs> This had happened in 1965 when Savile's alone was liberty. Well, the the British police were not the politically correct pricks they are today in 1965. Anyone, anyone, any man in, in the in the land, be he ever so high, who spoke to a humble police constable like that would be arrested. Yeah? This is absolutely ridiculous. Um... There was there was another one um, in another paper where a guy um, claimed to Savile was interfering with a woman on a train, and he said he, he hit him without realising he was knocked him to the ground. He was afraid he'd get into trouble. Well, with no record of that in the in the documentary, the the, um, the Mark Williams Thomas so called documentary, so called. Um, <laughs> There's a, a, a guy who admitted he had form for for fraud or something. He was he had been a journalist. Um, he said that Savile was taking a girl to a. He, he ran into Savile in, in London, and he was taking a twelve year old girl to his to his hotel room for you know, obviously to play chess. Um, if that had happened. What would the hotel have done to start with? But if that had really happened, this guy would have been on the phone to his editor and the police in that order. They'd probably say, Get somebody down here with a camera, PDQ. And then they'd phone the police and say, There's a girl, an underage girl being violated. Uh, but yeah, people, they, they swallow this junk, this garbage. Yeah? And the press and the media, they, they know. They know this is all lies, most of them, and they go along with it. Um, anyway, that's I've been waffling on for nearly an hour and 20 minutes now. Very disappointed nobody's turned up, <laughs> but uh, I'll put this on the Intel Archive next month. Um, um, hopefully, I'll be on, on, on um, YouTube uh, in a day or two, edit out the uh, stuff that being the uh, irrelevant stuff at the beginning. But by now, you should have some idea of um, the nonsense of celebrity allegations. Um, the fact that none of these, very few of these women ever suffer consequences. Uh, Michael Flatley, the dancer, uh, was accused. He had a one-night stand with a woman who accused him of rape. He sued her for a million dollars, but I don't think he got anything. Um, very occasionally, a celebrity false allegation will be um result in a jail sentence um the allegation neil hamilton and his wife christine were were accused of uh there was this demented female nadine milroy sloan uh and it was actually max clifford who was uh sold that story to the press so it's as some people consider that karma but um uh, that she ended up with four a four year sentence, uh, but uh, Hamilton was it's rather I mean he's he made a big thing about that but it was actually the best thing that ever happened to him because he'd uh, <coughs> he lost a, a defamation action against Mohammed Al Fayed who's himself been accused of rape uh, and um, Al Fayed went in the in witness box and. <laughs> Publicly accused the Duke of Edinburgh of, of ordering the assassination of Diana Princess of Wales. So, <laughs> so Hamilton lost lost a, a libel action to a man who thinks that uh, the, the Prince Philip murdered his his, his daughter-in-law. <laughs> and uh, and um, um, so the woman who accused him, she got four years. And she went on to accuse somebody else, not of rape, but of assault. She got a jail sentence for that. She's on the timeline. Uh, but that, that turned out very well for Hamilton because uh, he, he and his wife became sort of celebrities. But the allegations, the allega although the allegations against him and her were so outrageous, the, the other bloke she accused, they weren't. He was, uh, he had form. I don't, I don't know if he was a sex offender or something, but um, 
if she had accused just him, he could well have been convicted and be, be looking at heavy prison time. So, anyway, um, that's about all I have to say about um, celebrity false allegations at this point. Uh, don't believe any of the hype, you know. Don't believe any of the hype about, oh, I didn't think anyone would believe me. Uh, whether it comes from Juanita Broadwick or some demented hag who accuses um, a disc jockey or rock star or something. Um, these allegations are <clears throat> overwhelmingly unworthy of belief. They don't just happen in the Western world either. There have been a few in India. Uh, there's, there's been uh, one or two in um, South Korea and, and Japan as well. Um, if anybody finds any um, any um, false allegations from other, other areas in the world, please uh, send me the link or a scan or something. Um, so anyway, this will be going on uh, on the Internet Archive and before that on to YouTube. I uh, hope that uh, some people will eventually watch this and learn something. Uh, you will learn something from this that you won't learn from mainstream media.